In a world of limitless opportunities and countless challenges, the choices we make manifest themselves into the very roads that guide us. In the tribulations and triumphs that shape, weather and bind these paths together are the very essence of what makes the world such a beautifully strange place. But we walk our path with no map, in search of answers that nobody has, simply hoping that we don't get lost along the way. So maybe just sharing our story of where we come from and the things that have guided us along the way can be enough to guide those lost in their own path. I'm Zach Bonanza, and this is the Lost Guidance Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Zach Bonanza, as always, your host of the Lost Guidance Podcast, and I'm joined by the very talented Andy Soroka. Guys, for anybody who doesn't know, Andy is a member of Our Common Roots. You might remember that name from last season. We had Ryan Flynn on, another member of the band. Ryan Great guy, awesome. and luckily you put me in touch with Andy. And uh, uh, on top of that, I've also noticed uh, around that same time that Andy was beginning his own podcast in the area. And obviously, uh, anybody doing a local podcast is a huge uh, influence to me and uh, just like uh, somebody that I can share that commonality with because there's not many of us so welcome let's uh, get right into it dude thank you so much man this is awesome hell yeah man so what I usually like to do is just have people start off and kind of give a little bit of their background like uh, obviously focusing on both the music and the podcasting element today but what really inspired you to get into music and how did it lead to you getting into our common roots that is a, that's kind of that's a funny story a bit of a long one um <laughs> so I actually almost didn't get into music. I kind of hid away from music. Oh, really? And then music came back and found me pretty hard. But in the beginning, I, this was like the fourth grade and they, I wanted to play the trumpet. So I finally, you know, I get the trumpet and my teacher had given us a piece of music to learn over the summer. And I'm a fourth grader, right? Summer vacation, right? I'm not going to sit there and, and learn a piece of music that first summer. Yeah. So I didn't do it, and we get back to the first day of school, and we're expected to know this piece of music. So he starts this this whole the whole band strikes up, and I am just sitting there mimicking it, just going, "Oh crap! I didn't study." Music. So <laughs> I remember it very clearly, and I'm I'm just kind of looking at everybody, and I'm just kind of faking, <laughs> yeah. And he stops the whole thing, and he goes, "If you keep doing that, you and me are gonna get together like oil and water." <laughs> I and I and I from there on I hated music in that way. Really? Yeah. I so I never So for years you didn't even want to get back into it. It kind of embarrassed you almost that moment and just bad emotional connection. It absolutely was. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely was. And then flash forward to Do me a favor, try to keep that mic closer. Oh yeah. Um flash forward to high school and my buddy Neil gets a guitar. And I thought that was kind of cool. And so he's playing the guitar. And I remember he comes over one night and he falls asleep or I went over there or something. And I play, I picked up his guitar and I start trying to play the thing. And I'm sliding my fingers up and down the, the strings and on the fretboard. And I cut myself and I bleed on his guitar. And I'm super freaked out. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my goodness, he's going to he's gonna kill me. This dude's going to kill me. I'm messing up his guitar. So I'm, like, spending half the night, like, trying to clean the guitar up really well. And that was – that night, you know, was, like, a huge connection towards music. And then I think it was a year later on my 16th birthday that my folks finally got me my first guitar. It was an electric guitar. Um, and I took a couple lessons – and I did not enjoy them. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I said, oh, maybe this isn't for me. And I, you know, I, I, with Carmen Carmonica, he's over, he's over in New Hartford, amazing teacher. He's super, super talented guitar player. Unreal watching this dude play the guitar. Yeah. And, and you know, you're a student and you're, you're sitting next to this guy who's just like, <laughs> up and up and down the fretboard. And you're thinking to yourself, I can't get there. I can't get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he starts trying to teach me music and it's just frustrating. It was it was frustrating. It I didn't like the way that it felt. Um just I, kind of like a something you're just unaccustomed to, you know. It feels just like uh like an abrasion in your life. You're yeah. Like, Man, I just I just wasn't jiving. 
No, not a lot at of people all. have that initially when, with music, though, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, from you know, and from myself now talking to people, I, I find that that's that's such a commonality with so many people. It was like just like you know, high school band and like just not really getting it first, and then you know, right. you just keep going and keep going, and finally things start to make sense and things start to click. Right. So he he told me about tabs, and he te- he taught me about guitar tabs, and uh-huh. that became oh, there's a whole system of code out there that I can find that just puts you know put your finger here put your finger here and then like this is how you play it right so i kind of took that and i stopped playing lessons and or stopped doing lessons and started learning songs on my own and that was that was really that's where i started to you know music had had found me again and then i was like starting to enjoy it and i was able to play and you're growing in your own skin with it kind of thing yeah yeah so yeah. from there i just started to take some of the chords that i was learning and then mm-hmm. i became very anti learning songs and i and i all it became about you know if i can just learn all these chords and i can put them together in my own weird ways and right. that's when i started writing you know i don't think i started i had a couple of riffs and i had a couple things here and there but it wasn't until college that i had a couple songs and yeah. you know then then they became funny songs that i would play around <laughs> campfires you know yeah. uh can i curse yeah fuck yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so my first song like one of the first songs that i can really remember people singing with me was called fuck yeah and that was and that was the chorus like it was just like fuck yeah and like we'd all you know we'd all get hammered at these campfires and that's awesome you know i had a couple lyrics in the verse that you know i don't don't think they meant anything it's just kind of some words that i threw together but it just like eventually built up to that chorus and everyone was like fuck yeah (laughs) i I don't even play that song anymore i should rewrite that you got to you got to i want to hear that down at saranac yeah (laughs) so finally you're getting kind of this emotional connection in a positive way whereas it was just this echo and the shadow of a negative one behind you you didn't really want to get involved in music with the trumpet yeah then you have the guitar lessons that are you know less than uh what, what you expected yeah and finally now once you're producing your own stuff you're getting that connection with the people and having these great moments you, you realize it's natural meant to be right yeah that that was you know that was absolutely um that was when i started to really fall into to music you know and from there i I feel i feel you know between me and music it it was we were always connected i always had my guitar with me i was always that kid at the party who is playing the guitar all night long and i'm still that guy that's awesome i am still that guy at the party there's not enough of those guys (laughs) i say (laughs) yeah you know and and i just i love doing that i love getting people singing with me and i love like writing these ridiculous songs um so that was that was really you know eventually what led me into ocr and it's funny actually what led me into ocr was flash forward to when i I actually i left this area from 17 to 20 27 is when i finally came back and that's when i finally started finding Utica and it's actually when I first started like playing out in bars but I was playing under I have a solo project as well okay called tame the giant all right and that's my collection of weird songs a lot of them about are about aliens um some of them <laughs> are about little Debbie and <laughs> like the snacks <laughs> like the like the snacks I I wrote a theme song for little Debbie that I'm trying to sell to little Debbie let's toss it out there I I have been trying I have emailed them I've called them <laughs> little Debbie if you're listening please call me back I'm eventually gonna show up <laughs> to your house and just just play the song nonstop until you talk to me be launching Swiss rolls at your window <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I was I was playing around Utica as Tame the Giant. Um, I had a couple awesome musicians that I was playing with um, back then, and that's when I met Brian, who's the lead singer of um, Our Common Roots. Mm-hmm. And he, I kind of I, I zeroed in on him because he was doing this hilarious, and he still does it from time to time, and it's amazing. He does this amazing comedy routine where he asked the crowd to give him three so- three words. 
And then on the spot, he writes a song about those three words. <laughs> and it's usually hysterical. It's always hysterical. That's but, pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I saw him doing that. And, you know, I went up to him afterwards. And I was like, dude, I, I love what you're doing. Love what you're doing. And, you know, he said the same thing to me. We, we kind of hung out a couple times. Never, You know, it didn't quite click um, until like a year later when he had messaged me. And he was they he had met ryan and they had started the band um they were calling it common roots i think that was the original name um that they had that they had going they had they had played a couple open mic nights and they, they had written a couple songs mm -hmm. um that appeared eventually appeared on the album um and evolved over time so brian tells me that he wants me to meet Ryan and he has me kind of nervous to meet Ryan. He's like, Oh, this dude's amazing at music. You know, he's very, he's, he's theory trained and I'm not theory trained at all. Yeah. I, I, I play by feel. So you think you're walking in on Bob Dylan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, I, you know, I'm just, I, I'm so I'm nervous, you know, and then the, you know, they have me come in for this audition and we kind of instantly just kind of clicked. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. I, I want to say we wrote, I, I played a line to the song Magician that day that eventually ended up on the album. You know, nice. it's just like a little part of it that, you know, but it just happened that moment. Yeah. In, in like, the, wow, it was good. And you guys all just had this vibe feeling. And, and Ryan was actually playing the keyboards back then. Oh, really? Yeah. I see he's getting back into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, it's awesome. he's been playing the keyboards. And actually, for Tame the, um, for Tame the Giant, Ryan plays keyboards as well, too. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So going back to the album you had mentioned, Satire Circus, right? Uh, yeah, it's actually, it's Seder Circus. Seder Circus, okay. Yep. So, yeah, S-A-T-Y-R, right? Yep. All right, so uh, pretty cool collection of songs. Uh, I know you guys kind of intermingled them with uh, more mainstream songs like Sublime and all that when you were down on Saranac, and it yep. really got the crowd going, you know, because you ride this roller coaster of, hey, here's a song I know, like, whatever, Santeria or something, and then you're rolling into an original with a very similar feel, but, like, unique sound, you yep. know, which is awesome. So uh, how how long did that project take? I'm sure we had touched on it in Ryan's episode, but just, like, from your perspective, what were some of the, you know, uh, the collaborations that really worked with you guys? That is, that's a cool question. I really like that. So... I would say it was the first two or three years of the of the project was the was the length you know of us really writing all the songs and and then melding together and we also we never had a bass player in the beginning it was always it, it quickly became Ryan shifted to guitar I'm not sure that we ever actually even played a show with Ryan on the keyboards for OCR so Ryan quickly went to the guitar and it was just us two. Um, and we just had a couple fillers here and there for bass that would come in for like a couple practices or a couple shows and we'd right. show them the, the material. So we never really wrote with a bass player. Um, and then Colin Jewett was drumming for us and eventually he, he moved away. Um, so we had to find another drummer. So we were without a drummer. So I think we probably would have been ready to record the CD earlier, but you know, we had to get through all these like, these kind of hoops. tribulations going on every time. Yeah, we went up and we actually recorded like a small demo that I, I think there's probably like 40 people who got a copy of that. I, I can't remember how many we printed. It was it was it only had like three songs on it. <laughs> um, three songs or four. Somebody listening is like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple out there. I definitely know there's a couple out there. And there's it's funny because two of the songs we don't ever play anymore. Really? And I'm trying to, one of them, I'm trying to get the guys to bring back. It's, <laughs> it's a very kind of deep, powerful, slow kind of ballad. -y. And it, it's, it's funny because if you listen to that first demo of where you thought we were going to go. And yeah. then we kind of switch directions and we, we turn more into like a lot rockier because initially it was like not bluesy, but it was very soulful and it was slower and a lot of the songs were slower and then eventually when justin parker came on and the drums i mean he was just animal back there on the yeah. kit just wailing away he just <laughs> pushed our energy up and up and up and that you know it eventually turned into kind of a rock thing that's awesome so i would say it was about it was about three years uh that it took us to get that album recorded yeah. wow and and you know looking back i love it you know i love it as it is but it's long yeah it's it's a long album yeah but it's kind of cool to see like this roller coaster you guys are still in the distance you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and it's to create an album mm. a collective you know uh, a collection of your guys' musical talents all coming together and all the things that you, you know that 
are going on in your life or whatever and just representing them into something you can give to somebody and hope that they interpret it that way or interpret it whatever way, you know? Absolutely. You know, and I, I think that's that's what became the that's what became our common roots. That's how it became our common roots because oh, that was loud as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My computer just decided to have a meltdown and it's just coming through the mic. I know it. I know it. <laughs> That was less than optimal. Continue. I'm sorry. No. So, <laughs> so um, that's how it became our common roots, because it really was a, it was a collection of our different experiences through music coming together to create a new form of music. Because we all have this this different side of it. In the beginning, you know, it was Justin Parker had this this rock kind of punky flavor to it. You know, he would sometimes wear these like tight zebra leather pants that were just so <laughs> awesome you know and he was just like wailing he had the hair and he was wailing away back there and it you know it, it he had this like awesome rock side to it yeah. and i kind of come from guitar wise electric guitar wise i'd been focusing on like jam band type of work right um that's you know i i was just like playing to like instrumentals off of youtube and and you know that's the kind of stuff i was doing on electric guitar because my electric and my acoustic side are complete opposite sides of the coin and really? they, they don't often come together it's funny for ocr you know i play a lot of lead work and i and i do a lot of single note runs and i i pluck out a lot of the melodies and the songs right you know and that's the type of work that i do but on acoustic i i write kind of just 90s alternative rock songs about really weird stuff like yeah aliens and pirates and zombies <laughs> that's sweet though I wrote, I wrote this song called the zombie apocalypse and i just i just got to play that for the utica zombie walk it was awesome awesome. yeah so you know and uh brian you know brian comes from a kind of soulful church setting you know like that's where his like voice is and he had a lot of experiences uh down south um in like church settings and choir settings so he's got this really powerful soulful really heavy voice right. that he brings to the table you know and just right. and just puts out there and he's got a lot of power to it uh when brian is moving on that mic you know he he is moving on it and then you yeah. get you get ryan who just like backs him up perfectly and i and i've started to get into the the background vocals a little bit in the last like two years um you know vocally i'm not as strong as those two guys so and sometimes you know my I'm playing such strange rhythm guitar lines that it's hard to right. sing to it. Right. Um, you're focused on all, all the many things you're doing. Yeah. 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 So, and, and then, and then, uh, and then Ryan, you know, Ryan comes from this very classically trained, um, background, but he's also, he's got those folk rhythms. Yeah. I mean, he is just unreal on that yeah. acoustic guitar, you know, and he whips through those chords and it's, it's, so that's you know that's where like the melting pot of a lot of this stuff comes you know because if if we if they had if I had it my way we would be much you know we would be doing like ten and fifteen minute jam yeah versions Grateful Dead style yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> but they they reel me in and they're like all right you know like we're not gonna do a ten minute but you know we'll give you three minutes yeah you know? and I'm like can we do three and a half and they're like <laughs> three Come on, Dad. three fifteen <laughs> and I'm like all right cool. So, you know, it's it's a give and take and uh it's it's an exchange, you know, and I think yeah. that's, you know, really where the name came from, our common roots, you know? Yeah. And I think that's that's the cool part. And it's about awesome that. with with such different backgrounds you guys can come together and collaborate in such a way that you all mutually agree that it's it's good, powerful music and you all like like you said give and take with each other. So, yep. that's what bands need and I I mean, I know bands in the area even that are thrown together just because they say oh you have talent i have talent and it doesn't work they always end up petering out because yeah. you, you can't maintain that level of just kind of fuck itness you know mm -hmm. uh if you don't have your whole heart into it and believe what the other guys in your band are doing and that they're supporting you and all that you're not going to go far and that's why you know it's good to see that you guys at any point you could have abandoned that album you could have just quit along the way all you know, the ups and oh, yeah. downs collapse but you oh, usually had this dream there's 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 been tons of them yeah, <laughs> there's been tons of, of blowouts and blow ups and, you know, spending in days and sometimes even months mad at each other. Really? And, you know, like the short <laughs> tech. So like, are we meeting for practice this week? No. Wow. <laughs> 
but it all paid off, right? Finally. Yeah. And, and we're all and we're all still super good friends, um, you know. And you know, we've lost a lot of awesome band members along the way, but you know, it's always most of the time been amicable. And um, you know, we, right now um, we have Graham Espy, who's playing bass, who is just an absolute powerhouse um, and just an amazing human being. Just an awesome, all around awesome dude. He plays in this other, this other great band called honeysuckle vine and uh we also on the drums we just recently welcomed uh sarah mack um who is just she is awesome tremendous yeah she she's tiny but whoo she puts that power out <laughs> <laughs> that's killer man so, you know still rolling with the punches still growing still becoming yeah. you know yeah. maintaining this uh dream that you guys have you yeah. know which is awesome um so at what point did your love of music and just like your it sounds like your journey itself is kind of what pointed you in the direction of doing your own podcast, right? Yes. Absolutely. You know, and that's <laughs> and that is so I was, you know, on the way over here, I was actually I was like really starting to like piece together like kind of the history of like how I somehow got into wanting to do this. Mm -hmm. So Hidden Jams, um, which, you know, like we talked about is where I've been interviewing musicians, um, and you know, just wanting to hear them because I, I really genuinely love people's stories. You know, I love, yeah. I love to hear the stories Same. of like, yeah, you know, like it, it's cool because it, it starts to give me the same vibe. It started to give me the same vibe that, um, a show does, right. you know, and it's like the same adrenaline rush, you know, yeah. it's just like meeting someone new, you know, and you're like, okay, yeah, you know, like, you a little antsy. Yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> it's, but it's that it's a, it's a good type of answer, right? You know? Like you kind of like, can't wait to see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Even, even still after this, you know, I'm going into my second season, my heart gets a little fluttery when we're about to turn the cameras on and, yeah. you know, start talking about something. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. So, you know, I, I just, I genuinely love that, but how it kind of came out of me, was through a very strange series of events and not that strange i guess but you know in my mind it's it's strange just because like you know this one thing kind of just led to this led to that led to me thinking okay this is what we can do so i, I want to say it was about three years ago um excuse me i started playing music for facebook um because i was getting up really early in the morning i was getting up at like six o'clock in the morning and uh, my girlfriend had to go to work, so she, so she goes off to work, and I, you know, I was just kind of sitting there, and I was I was playing guitar all morning long, you know, and that's that's what I was doing. So I started thinking to myself, I, could, I why don't I just record this? You right. know, I'm like sitting here doing it, like I might as well just record it, and like I, I saw someone else out there, actually this band, Marbin, um, who is kind of a, you know they're kind of some heroes of mine too. They're an instrumental jazz band from Israel, and they are wow, oh they're in the area. They they travel everywhere. Excuse me. Yeah, they travel like all across the U.S. They travel out of the U.S. But what's unique about them is they're one of the cool. They're one of the not the cool or, or even one of the few. They're 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 just one of the bands that are total DIY. Yeah, and they did it themselves. You know, they're not signed by anybody, and they basically built their own. Um, that's what I'm looking for. They built up their own fan base, yeah. and they they just really worked at it, and they did it themselves. And it's really cool. They're unreal talented musicians. Really? Uh, the two of them are brothers. They're a guitar player and a, and a saxophone. They have a drummer and a bass player, but they're not related. But the two of them, you can tell that their their psyches are united. Yeah. To watch them play, I mean, they play a million notes a minute, and wow. these guys are like just super super tight. They do like this kind of gypsy jazz kind of cool sounds like something up my alley you know? oh yeah you should absolutely <laughs> check them out so the dude was just doing facebook live videos all the time mm -hmm. he'd be in the van you know the drummer would be driving and he would just turn it on and he'd be in the back seat and he would just sit there and play music and like people were super into it people were commenting you know and then That's he started awesome. like you know i watched him teach music and he he's giving these these lessons and and he's just like talking about he's super knowledgeable super super knowledgeable mm -hmm. and he, you know he's giving out guitar charts and he, and he's doing all these cool things and i i just saw that and i said that's that's really cool you know i'm sitting here watching him in the middle of my playing and he's know? just winging it yeah and this and this dude you know so i said all right let's start doing that so i wasn't doing facebook live but i was recording them and you know, I look back at the early ones and I, w I would just turn on the camera and I think, I don't know, I'm sure I would say hi. Maybe I would just be like, you know, put my hand up and then I'd, I'd play one of my songs. Yeah. <laughs> or I would do an instrumental jam to 
a YouTube video or I have a looper pedal that like puts out drum beats and you right. know, I would just play guitar and like loop all this stuff on it and just kind of see where it goes. And so I put out a bunch of those and then I started calling it the morning jam. And I had this real, <laughs> <laughs> I had this really, really funny, um, intro thing that i play every time you know and it like starts up and i'm like what up it's the morning jam morning jam <laughs> <laughs> and i was doing that every time and i started doing that like three four times a week and then i went out to a bar and this dude who i i don't even really know like saw me there and he's like what up it's the morning jam dude <laughs> and i was like whoa i was like i feel like you're making fun of me a little bit but i love it yeah like, right holy shit like you just you watched me you that watched means you me. watched it you know i know yeah i was like he clicked on your face <laughs> i know i was like you saw it like what that's awesome man so that that was that was a huge confidence thing that that was absolutely you know and you just kind of realized like man i should be making this a little bit more of a production well, okay, so so then I kept doing it as the morning jam, and my buddy said, dude, can I come on with you? And I'm like, come on what? And he's like, can I come on the morning jam? And I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just making what? these videos. Yeah, yeah, like, what are you, like, you want to come on? Yeah. And and he, and he didn't he didn't play he didn't play an instrument. He wanted to, he wanted me to make a beat, and he wanted to cover a Wu-Tang song. Oh. So, I, you know, I was like, Fuck it, dude. Let's do it. It's cool. Know? Yeah. So that was that was the first one that had a guest. That was the first morning jam. That was the first time. And I, and I think I was still barely talking. Maybe you know, it, I eventually just started saying, you know, I'd be like, "Hey, what's up, everyone?" Hey, you know, guys. like I do the morning jam intro. And Here's it, some guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know, or I'd be like, "Oh, it's snowing here, and it it sucks." Hope you guys are having a good day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and then, and then eventually I started talking a little more about what was going on, and I, you know, like promote an OCR show or attain the giant thing or something like that. So then eventually, um, Mikey D comes on, and we do the, we do the Wu Tang thing, and it got like you know I think they were getting like two three hundred views, and it shot up to like nine hundred. Wow! And I was like, whoa! And there's something I don't know why because. You know, it's just our generation that's really experiencing this thing. But something about getting views and likes, man, it's it's in us. It's like it's a primal thing that's triggered in a different way. Like, you know, obviously people who are politicians and people love adornment, I guess. Mm. And to to put something up and have people appreciate what you do. It's like, damn, that was really gratifying. Yeah. So I, I can resonate with that. You yeah. Know, probably like, wow, it's, maybe I take this up a notch kind of thing yeah you know abs absolutely you know I, I think that's that is it's a it's a super thing it's a super cool thing i've always been a huge proponent of facebook um you know because it's helped me connect it's helped me stay connected with people who i don't normally connect with you know for sure. I, I lived in colorado for a couple of years and i'm still daily connected to those people and that's awesome i yeah. haven't been back to Col well i've been back to colorado a couple times but you know if, if I don't see those people in six years, I still know how like Tyler's doing out in Oregon or I right. still know, you know, and I think that's awesome. Man. Yeah. There's definitely a big benefit. To yeah. It, people you know? sometimes get down on it. I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe they're using it the wrong way or, or something, right. but I like it. It's an if you're absorbed tool. into it. Yeah. There's absolutely such thing as kind of overly obsessively yeah. checking your, oh, your uh, social media and all that. But, um, th for me too, it's like when I look back and I see people, maybe I went to college with or that I met along the way, it just kind of triggers that time in my life too. In my yep. head, you start sorting through the memories. Like, man, that was a good time, and you get a little bit of a appreciation for it, or just kind of nostalgia, I guess, if nothing else. Absolutely, and I don't know. Th that is definitely one of the benefits I see to social media. But uh, yeah, so so you're getting all these views. So and yeah, so so people were people were into it, and then I had a couple other people who asked me to come on to the to to the thing, and I was like. Mm -hmm. I'm floored, you know. My buddy Ben uh, from the Remsen Social Club was like, "Dude, I want to do one of those videos with you." And, uh, my buddy um, Spencer from Jack and the Jukebox was like, "Dude, you know, like let's let's do one of these videos." And I still hadn't had one of those guys on yet, um, you know. And I, I was like, ah, you know, I, I wanted to jam with them, but then I started thinking, you know, like what if I talk to them about what they got going on, you know? Because right. people are like watching these videos. I'm like, so you know. Why don't I talk to them? Just People know who I am, obviously. So, like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was uh, Ben came on for the first time, and you know, it's it's a great video. Um, 
we, we do the morning jam thing together. Both of us are like, morning jam. <laughs> and, and then we, we play a song and then I, I talk to him a little bit, you know, and it's, it's a super rudimentary conversation, you know, and I think it, it, um, it was like maybe like five minutes, you know, after the song, the whole video was like nine minutes long Yeah, and it went super, super well. And, and again, like people shared it, people were like super into it. People just were commenting on it. Um, so that is really where Hidden Jam started to spawn. It was going to go on as the Morning Jam, but I had come across another guy who does a Morning Jam show on Facebook with a ton of awesome quality and yeah. and, and a ton. Uh, it's really well produced. The dude does an awesome um, job of it. His name is I, I'm probably gonna butcher his last name, and I'm sorry, but it's Todd um, Millen. 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 So, okay. Yeah. And, and I actually messaged him and I was like, Oh dude, that's cool. You're doing this thing. You know, I, I've actually been doing this, um, too. You know, you could tell he was a lot, he was a lot more serious than I was at the time about it. Right. Um, and he's from Kingston, New York. Oh wow. You know? So that's like, that was like right around the corner. Right. Um, so I, I just thought that was super, super cool. Um, and he, he just plays an instrumental song. Um, I, I haven't seen anywhere there's like singing, uh, but he spends the week making a drum beat, and he plays the drums himself, and wow. then plays the bass himself, makes the beat, and then live in the video, plays the backing track, and wow. then jams to it. And he's wow. an amazing player. I mean, That's awesome. Dude is just, you know, he's super, super, super good. So he had this morning jam thing going, and I really didn't want to step on his toes, so I said, all right, I got to... Change it up. Got to change it up. Got to right. come up with something else. Um, and then eventually landed on hidden jams you know and then i i had the name hidden jams and i was kind of you know i I hadn't talked to anyone other than like close family and friends about it excuse me so i had it for a while and then i eventually said you know what i I, i'm gonna go after this you know and i started looking into like cameras and i started looking into like how Mm -hmm. i could actually up the quality of this and said all right if i'm gonna do this i want to do this so there is an awesome artist. Uh, her name is Riley Smiley, and she is out of Rochester, New York. Okay, and, and she is uh, like artist, like pen and paper drawing. Right, unreal how good her art is. Super, <laughs> super good. Like she has a Facebook page called Art of Riley Smiley. Like absolutely, absolutely suggest checking it out. Um, okay, she does custom like logos or like sticker design or something like that. And I was like, you know what? I got this idea, so I, I, I shot it to her for a logo, and it wasn't until I really saw the logo that I was like, all right. It's time. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, she, what she sent me back, <clears throat> you know, the logo that she did um, was just super, super amazing. And that's, you know, that, again, brought my confidence way up. Yeah. So, you know what? This, this is something that I can get behind, and other people are getting behind, Um so that's when I went out and I, I shot all the, the episodes. I, I just started messaging people and just kind of trying to annoy people and just like, hey, do you want to come and <laughs> uh, shoot this shoot this uh, podcast, you know, or shoot this uh, show with me? And, you know, maybe this is something something will be cool. And uh, yeah, so from there, that's when I developed the, the idea for Hidden Jams and developed the whole it's a roadmap and the, like kind of the mission statement about, you know, like what I wanted this yeah, all just to be about kind of uh, solidifying your idea and uh, going forth with it, you know, and yeah. I see like a lot of similarities in my journey, you know, uh, there's definitely these incremental jumps of when you, you start realizing that ideas are coming to fruition, you mm-hmm. know, um, which I'm happy to see, you know, some people have great ideas that they never put any effort into and they get lost to the wayside, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I've mentioned this before on the show, obviously, but kind of the conception of my idea here was uh, with uh, with somebody else who I'm, I'm not really a friend with anymore, but uh, we just kind of were both sitting around shooting the breeze. And everybody has this idea of like, man, I feel like the input that I have to certain things is interesting, you know? And I feel like... Um, just just based on my background and my love of like uh, psychology and just speaking with people and analyzing them and their past and, um, and just this overall love I have of, of podcasts like people like Joe Rogan and stuff and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson who just pick these topics that they're passionate about and, and they just get every bit of detail from all these different experts or, or just people who are knowledgeable about it. Mm-hmm. So I just had all these different avenues of uh, 
just kind of inspiration. And I'm like, man, I really wanted to do something with this. So I started writing a million list, uh, a list of a million names of like potential things. And I wanted it to be snappy. Like you don't want it to be, I mean, some, some names are really good. Like, uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't think of one, but like, you know, a really long title. You're like, wow, it's so long. I'll never forget it. But mostly I wanted something that was like, oh, okay. I get it. And it's a bit of a conundrum, lost guidance. So I was just like writing words that meant things. And then I came across, I was like, lost guidance. I'm like, huh, it's got a snap to it. So I started doodling the word lost. And I wanted it to be like, a, the, I knew the L. I knew exactly that I wanted to have a multitude of guests on about a multitude of different things. I love music and art and all this stuff. So I knew I wanted the L to be like a guitar and like a film reel, spelling it out. And like in my head, I'm very creative, but I'm the worst artist you've ever seen. <laughs> I swear to God, I, I couldn't draw a smiley face sun if I wanted to, and, you know. So I, I just kind of like took my time as best I could and just like tracing things. Got the L, the O, and that's what the lost guidance is in the bottom corner here you're seeing. So L, O, and then like a, a meandering path, S, and then a tree for a T. You're just talking about like nature and traveling and space and music and art and everything. And I doodled this into a book and it went away. And uh Slowly, I started buying a little bit of equipment, got like a mic, got the interface. I had my crappy ass Dell from like you know, 2010. The thing barely started up. It had like, you know, the slowest processor ever. I, Just I, I know. I know that exact. <laughs> the first I, the first I tried to put a um, editing program on this old computer I had. And, and the thing it, probably sizzled and got a little smoky. <laughs> you know? like almost exactly like it, w it was like you couldn't touch it for like hours and I didn't even want to come back on for a couple days after that. And yeah. Like, oh. Overloaded it. You know, because <laughs> the technology, the software that you're even getting online is just so advanced these days. Yeah. So, so slowly I'm like, man, maybe I could take this into some, and I sent the artwork off that I, that little doodle I had and a couple ideas to uh, Carly Wright, who was my graphics designer for all this stuff. And she came back with that. And I was just like, that's better than I could have imagined. And I was like, now I got to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, this is too good to let go to waste at that point. And so bought a little bit more equipment, got invested into it again, kind of stopped, came to a wall where I'm like, I have it all. I have a means of doing it. I just was I didn't have that piece to really I, I didn't feel I was ready to start yet. You know, yeah. I'd I fuck around on Audacity, um, and just like make videos on my own private YouTube or whatever and um didn't even post anything. Just like I and everything to me sounded not good enough. You yeah. know, and I was listening to people like the disruption network and stuff and I'm like, man, they really got a quality sound to them and I just don't want to come out subpar and have people think it's shit mm -hmm. and then there it the idea dies. Yeah, and I don't want it to die. So I come, my buddy Bowie, who hopefully will be on soon, he kind of inspires me in tandem with the Disruption Network guys and Z and all them. Just, oh, just give me motivation. Unreal. So how cool they are. Exactly. <laughs> and it, it like they they both like sat me down and they're like, man, you you just got to do it. And so they showed me the different avenues and uh, just like how to make my production as good as it is now. And obviously still learning and all that. And I, I don't know. I just felt like it was finally time. My ideas had come through. I put in the work, put in the time, put in the research. And uh, it, it all came to be. And now I'm seeing like the positive results. I see people reaching out. You know, I, I posted about season two coming out. People are, like saying like, I'm so happy you are doing this. I'm so happy you're continuing with it. I really enjoy these. And even if I only get, you know, of the few hundred people who have viewed my stuff, if a few of them have watched the whole episode and enjoyed it and gotten a few hours of distraction or information into their day, that's an, that's a win, dude. Yeah. So uh, it's just kind of cool to see like similarities. And like I said, we don't see too many podcasters in the area. So to see similarities in our journey and how it's going forward, but also you're focusing on the music aspect and getting yep. the local scene. I'm focusing on like a more broad spectrum, but it's able to connect us. It's just awesome. I think it's good for the whole community. It's good for everybody listening. And it's just this uh, unanimous feeling of like mutual respect and appreciation for everybody. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's tremendous to see a fellow podcaster no, and somebody you, following what they do, you know, their yeah. dream. Well, that dude, that is, that is super, super awesome to say. And I really, really appreciate that, you know, and, and, and for me, it, it really means a lot because I, I am so new to this. Yeah. Likewise, you know, yeah. less than a year I've been doing this. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, yeah, the, I, yeah, it's definitely less than a year um, that like, at the quality level that I, I've been going at now right. is like how I've been trying to do it. Right. And it, it's, um, it's not easy. <laughs> Absolutely not. And sometimes I want to, I'm like, man, it almost becomes burdensome. And when I, when I realize that about myself, I almost smack myself back into normalcy. Cause I'm like, man, 
It's not burdensome. I love it. I love sitting down and talking to people I've never talked to you before and just having that connection. And being like, as soon as, you know, like when somebody comes on and we're all done here, as soon as I take these headphones off, I'm like, damn, that was good. Like, I really enjoyed that so yep. much because I learned a lot, yeah. you know? And that's. And it, it's just like, it's like an adrenaline rush kind of, you know? It is. It's like the whole time, you know? And it's just like, it lasts. It's like this little kind of bubbling, like volcano of energy yeah. in your mind. And it's so, especially I feel like, I don't know, something about having headphones on and hearing yourself and the other person talk. Yeah. It's like you're immersed in your own world for a few minutes. And yeah. it, it literally distracts you from everything else. All you're thinking about is the topic of discussion mm -hmm. and everything else goes to the wayside. And it's like, a, it's a good release. And, you know? Yeah. I, I just really love it. Of it no so. that, that is super 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 cool dude yeah so you know and, and another you know another thing that's funny about doing all this stuff is like watching yourself after afterwards yeah. and like looking <laughs> through all the edits and like yeah <laughs> watching all the like little things that you say and that that was pretty wild too yeah that was the first time that i'd really put myself on camera and was like whoa yeah <laughs> and then you're your harshest critic obviously yeah it was like you know? i say super a lot yeah <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> super cool super super cool oh yeah uh, if like you watch hidden jams i say super cool a lot yeah yeah <laughs> i just put like counters of like how many times i was gonna like, do ding, that episode uh the last episode of my first season i was on with my buddy nick and we had the joke in the middle of the episode i just kept saying you know I'm like, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm going and I'm like, oh my God, I wanted, I started recognizing it. And every time we said it, we started pissing our pants. Cause it just, you know, it's just crazy yeah. <laughs> how much you say that stuff. I was going to put a counter there too. Uh, that's great. It, it is funny, but, um, <laughs> so, I mean, you got a few different avenues of, of things that you love here and they're both growing and you're putting the time and effort into it. Where do you hope the band is and where do you hope the podcast is? down the line well um to continue on the hidden jams a little bit yeah um so my kind of the business model i want um of hidden jams is eventually i want to travel you know i, I want i want to travel with the band and I, I i always want that you know and like of course i want someone to come in and be like we love you guys and like off you go right <laughs> always you know right. and I, but at the same time i want that with hidden jams a little bit too um my business model and how I would love to see the future of it and what I would eventually want to grow to and what I'm trying to grow to is getting an RV and traveling the country and do this. And my plan is to have the Hidden Jams RV and maybe set up a permanent spot in the back of it where... It's like a mini studio where it's kind of a mini studio, you know, right. like where I have everything like just like this. Everything's like set in its right place. And it's like, OK, you know, like we're going to come in like this is this is the spot. Right. We'll do this. Yep. And, and then so we show up in the town and um, my, my girlfriend helps me with this show, too. And, you know, eventually, you know, if we had an RV, it's like we could like just live in it and like travel and we could just do this. Yeah. And um, that's the dream. Yes, this is absolutely <laughs> the dream. Um, so we show up in a town, say Burlington, Vermont park the RV in like an RV campsite. And then, and then I spend the next two to three days going into town, going to open mic nights. If I can find any going to guitar stores, looking at band posters at breakfast places right, and the local and like Facebook scene and you going know, to like that. bar shows, local Facebook scene, trying to find out the local bands, messaging them directly being like, who's the singers, who's the songwriters, you know, like can right. I talk to these guys, have them come out to the RV you know, spend the week or two there and like just shoot as many of the episodes as I can. And then on to the next, on to the next town. Why Burlington, Vermont? Was that the first place that you thought of? I don't know. It's just close. And it's like <laughs> it's such a cool music. Like, like say, say we're in Burlington, Vermont. And I'm like, that was really fucking specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, Anywhere in the world you pick there. <laughs> well, awesome. you know, I, I want to do, I would do like, you know, for now, U.S. tours, you know, right. Like that would course. be, you know, like I, I just picture like going up towards like Maine and like coming down, going, yeah. you know, but I want to go to like, you know, I want to hit the big spots, but I also want to hit like some of the smaller kind of, you know. Yeah. And we, just, just try to dig up people. You right. Know? And, and another business model that I have, and some people have said this is crazy and some people have commended me on it and, you know, it's split down the middle. I pay everyone who appears five bucks. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nice. And, you know, it's just me just trying to say to them, I know how much time yeah, and how much energy 
you're worth it. Yeah. You know, you know, and I know this isn't much, but it's a cup of coffee or it's like, that's awesome. A little bit of gas to come see me. Right. You know, but like, I want you to know that like, I, I care about the, you know, the times and tribulations that you've put into honing this, this song, you know, and like it, it, all your musical career, you know, up to that moment plays up to the, to the time, you know, and, and it continues to go and it's very multifaceted. It's not like, you know, hidden jams is like the end all, but it, you know, it's, it's just like a spot on the road. And it's like, you know, everything worked up to this moment where we're here and like, you're jamming on this song that you yeah. wrote. Um, because the other thing is it's only original material. Yeah. Um, that's it. And, and originally, so speaking to a little bit about the, somewhat soon close future of hidden jams you know in like the second season that i'm working on now i eventually i originally just wanted to work with with singer songwriters and i really just wanted it to be one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. i think this this time i'm gonna open it up to bands yeah up to three members yeah up to three members um and i'm gonna ask the bands send the main singers and songwriters of, of the music, you know, because I really do want to focus on just the original aspect of music. Um, because you know, I just ultimately, I think there should be more original music. Yeah. You know? That's more I, inspirational. Yeah. You know, I love, I, you know, they have these big shows like America's got talent and the idea is really great, but you know, at the same time, or not, you know, like the voice or like one of those other shows, it's a lot of covers, you know, and that's what they want you to do is like to play an right. established song, you know, to right. like show off your skills. And I get that, but like, you know, we still lose the original aspect. And I, and I wish there was some show just as big as all that where America was voting on an original. Right. Only originals. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, cause I want to hear what you came up with. I want to hear what you're, what, you know, I want to hear you, you know, and I, I'd rather hear an original musician butcher one of their own songs right then flawlessly play me a song that i can and the only reason to. we're playing you know uh grateful dead or acdc or any of those and why people are constantly uh imitating them and trying to make a sound out of their music and the only reason we idolize them is because they started in some small town bar and worked their way up to what they are now you know these uh, rock gods in our minds so yeah. uh without the the uh excuse me, the contribution of people going out and just seeing them and supporting them and, and giving them that exposure, there would be no band, yeah. you know? So it all starts on this little scene. And it's important to know that what you're doing is important because uh, you're giving them a, an avenue of, of people that otherwise wouldn't have known them. You know, say you have on one guest, all of their friends and family and whoever likes them are going to see that episode, probably like your page. And yeah. suddenly they're getting notifications of other people and somebody leads to somebody else. And yeah. we're living in a time more than ever where that's possible, where a connection can be made across the world with one, you know, link between them. And it could be your Facebook page. Yeah. And that's important. And I, I really love the $5 thing because in my mind, as soon as you said that, I didn't even think of it physically, but almost metaphorically, you're like, listen, dude, your time is paying off. So stick with it. You know, even if this is your first time getting paid for it or whatever, I'm sure obviously your guests have, have had gigs and all that, but it's just like, a, it's symbolic of saying your music is paying for it. Paying, yeah. It's starting to pay the bills. So. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I was, uh, it didn't, it didn't work out, but like last season I was trying to, um, have a, a 14 year old kid on the show that never had played a gig, you know? So that would have been, you know, his, yeah. his first paying gig. Right. You know? And kind of give him that motivation to keep going. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, so that, that, that's an important thing that, you know, I just, um, and you know, for now it's crazy. Cause it's like, you know, it's all out of my own pocket, but like, you know, I really appreciate everyone spending their time with me and, and, and coming out to see me and, and dealing with me, messaging them. There's been a couple of people where, you know, it took a, 10 tries you know and there's still right. one that's like ongoing where it's like all right how about this friday and we're like, i'm the same way friday's like, oh, i'm sorry dude this thing just came up and i can't do it or he's like oh i can't make it out today you know and it's yeah. like all right you know like try it again some other time you know yeah. like but let's just keep trying you know and that's that's the cool thing so um so like i was saying for the second season i i think i'm going to open it up to bands you know and i and i, and I, I have two episodes recorded well, I did open it up to bands because I actually recorded an episode where I do where I do have multiple people on it. So that's the first time. And I have a brand new interview style for the second season. I don't actually want to give it away yet. No need. Yeah, keep people teased. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I came up with something that's going to be what I hope is really fun and kind of unique and I, you know, I'm hoping that that'll 
that'll be kind of a cool thing for hidden jams. That's awesome, man. So you have uh, kind of your next season model as well as your long term plan, which yeah. is good. You know, it gives you something to work toward. And I always tell people, even if you don't have goals, like like people ask me, like, what's your five year plan? You know, uh, I was just recently promoted at work, and they, well, that was one of the interview questions. And I'm like, well, here it is. I want to be in this position by here, and then after that, I'm gonna go do this. Hope to go back to grad school and all these things. And uh, they're like, wow, all right. You, I tell that to people, and like, you sound like you have it together. I'm like. I just got to tell myself that if you don't even have a goal to say out loud to yourself, you're just kind of going with the flow. You're, yeah. you're only ever just settling for whatever the next day is going to bring you, you mm -hmm. know, and you're never just putting forth that effort at all. At least if it's in the back of your mind, it's resonating with the fact that it's still there and you should be working toward it and, and accomplishing it. So it's good to see that you're setting goals for the podcast. And, and even if maybe you don't achieve that, you are working toward it. Yep. And at some point it could happen. You know, and, and speaking of not achieving a goal, um, I actually had a goal to be back much sooner. Yeah. I wanted to be back. I, I wanted to be, excuse me, almost in the middle of the second season right now. Um, but uh, late summer was just fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was having fun and I was, you know, I was going to campfires all the time and I was just hanging out and I, I wrote a bunch of music and I was working on the two projects, um, the two band projects, our common roots and tame the giant. Cause that, like I was saying, I'll, I'll touch on that real briefly. My solo, we could, we could do like a whole other podcast about this. <laughs> My solo project has morphed into a like, 12 to 13 15 person rock opera wow that now has props and actors and <laughs> a narrator and it's absolutely adult oriented uh you cannot take your kids out to see tame the giants rock opera <laughs> <laughs> um but I could see that on a freaking theater uh, sign or a billboard right there. Tame the Giants rock opera. I'm like, holy fuck, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not. Sometimes I think I would call it. I would fuck an alien tour. But I'm, <laughs> you know, <that's>... <laughs> <laughs> still trying to work the kinks out on that one. But you know, so it's it's a rock opera that it's it's about aliens and it's about little Debbie and the main character falls in love with little Debbie and they're abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and they eventually find a group of aliens that is a Disney cult. <laughs> so, you know, like they're chanting like a whole new world, a whole new world. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Come under the sea, my brothers. That's nuts, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then eventually little Debbie dies, and there's like this crazy witch doctor who tries to bring her back to life, and there's like a wood chipper on this alien ship, and it's it, wow, yeah. So that's that. Late summer, we were working on a lot of the props. Um, we just, I think it was like a month ago, uh, at the at an animal jam, played the whole entire thing in its entirety with all with most all. Well, we were missing a couple actors, but we had we had most everyone together for that one and wow <laughs> quite the production yeah it, that was a huge production um so that took a lot of my time and our common roots took a lot of my my time you know and i just um i would have liked to be back sooner but when can people expect season two i'm back now um i'm really i think we're gonna do i think it's gonna be midwinter okay um you know so I, so I was thinking i'm gonna take the next i should be done filming by the end of november Nice. And then I'll probably take most of December and I'm going this time I'm going to edit everything up. So a lot, I, I made a lot of mistakes the first time around. Um, and, and that was, you know, I had to step back and I had to really think about how I was going to attack this um, the next time because I was editing the videos week to week mm -hmm. and I, I, I didn't edit anything ahead of time. And like, and um, at, we, were, we were talking on this earlier off camera. Um, I, I apologize I am absolutely learning about sound and video, and I'm definitely a newbie. Um, I'm super inexperienced, and I, right. re I recorded all of these episodes, and then I go back, and three quarters of them have this horrible buzz, <laughs> and it's loud, you know. And like one of them, it was really loud. And I, I know. I figured out that it was, you know, and I don't know. I should have done a lot of research, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But it was because uh, I turned on a a light in the room and the camera was like picking up the like register 
this like low sonic hum from the light or something. The microphone yeah. was, you know, so it's like the, in the background, it's like this. Wow. It's it like deep at times. And you're you know? like, oh my God, I did all these like that. <laughs> I, I worked really Lesson hard. Learned. I was like messaging people and I was like, who knows this, this, you know, I'm like looking up tutorials of like how to like, right. And I, you know, and I found all these like hum reducers and, and I was able to like bury a lot of it down. Um, but the audio was definitely lacking and it, it recorded the music really well. I was, all the music got recorded really, really well. It was just when it got down to the, the conversation, I, you know, there wasn't that, that loud register of music going on. So it like, it was picking up all the the static silence right. in in between everything. Right. You know? So if like we weren't talking, if there was a pause, it would just jump right out. You know, it would just be like, wow. and then it would kind of die down a little bit during the talking. And then if it, the t talking was quiet, then it you know, so that was a big learning curve. Um, just learning how to like. You know, you think in your sometimes I think in my mind I'm like so smooth and I imagine a conversation and then it gets there and I'm like, oh, the, 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 the. The, the first episode <laughs> I was just talking to Lady Daisy. Uh, her name is Cassidy Carpenter. Super, super awesome. And we were just talking the other night about, you know, she's like, we, we were awkward on there. And I was like, I, that was my fault. You know, like I was I was yeah. hosting it. I should have, you know, like been able to like lead it and made it comfortable, you know, right. Like, that was the first one I ever did, like on the nice camera and like with the setup and everything. So I, I got on there and I was like stiff as a board. I'm like, what, what up? This, this, this is uh, jams. Yeah. Scripted. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I know that feel, man. I, it took me a lot of practice to try and just get a little bit more fluidity into my speech. Yeah. And even now I break it, you know, I have moments or I break it up in the wrong way or whatever. Um, and it's hard based on who you're interviewing. I've had people on who you have to kind of pull a little bit more information out of. So you're constantly grasping for, I mean, you can see I only have like, maybe you can't see that. I have like four lines of notes for this episode. Sometimes a page or, or whatever, but uh, for somebody who doesn't want to speak and just gives you like, one word answers yeah or just real quick and then it ends it yeah. you're like okay on to the next one uh yeah and then you burn out through pretty fast so I, i've yep. learned a, kind of like a general uh, guidelines and outlines in my head of which ones i want to go to next and how i want the show to proceed but it's an ever learning curve and i get tongue-tied i'm sure i say things that aren't the right words for the right situation and I, it's too late to go back over them and in my head i'm like oh i fucked that up you know or whatever <laughs> yeah um you and, know what i've also learned you know if i if i'm doing something and i think in myself oh i fucked that up you know i'm like i gotta tell myself stop don't even worry about it let it go yeah you know and exactly then, and then like it's like right on to the next thing because know? if you sit in your brain and think about uh, and you're just focusing on that then you miss the conversation <laughs> and you're like oh wait what'd you just say for the best five minutes yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's not interesting <laughs> so so uh, sounds like you have a pretty good, again, going back to the idea, you have a good idea of where you want to see your podcast going. Where do you hope the band's going to end up in the future? I just want to, I just want to keep, um, just keep working at it. You know, we, we, um, we're writing songs right now. Uh, I think we're just about ready to go in and start finally recording um, our second set of songs. Awesome. A little um, bit quicker than three years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This time um, we got about, I would say half of another album ready, you know, or a, a short EP is like ready to go, uh, with some of our new material. So, uh, you know, I just want to see us keep getting bigger shows tomorrow. Uh, we're playing in, well, tomorrow when this is being recorded, not tomorrow when you're listening, <laughs> um, we're playing in Norwich and that's awesome because we haven't been out of the area in a little while and it's just going to be nice to, you know, be two hours away and, yeah. you know, be playing some of the songs that I, that I know, not a lot of people have heard. So, right. So that'll be really fun. So I just want to see the band just, you know, I want to see us keep writing. I want to see us keep getting some bigger shows and like just keep tightening everything up and just keep adding, you know, our music is good and I want to start adding to our live performance. You know, we've been talking about that recently with OCR, you know, because um, with Tame the Giant, it's actually all the same members, but everybody plays a different thing other mm -hmm. than Graham. Graham still plays the bass, um, but everyone drinking seltzer <laughs> um so everybody everybody plays a different instrument and um that's a that's kind of a fun thing that 
when we do tame the giant, we can be so wild, you know, and we can mm -hmm. just, it's, it's very theatrical, theatrical and yeah. chaotic. And I think, you know, we're, we're going to like add a couple small elements, you know, because OCR is a different machine and it's a completely different machine. So it's, it's gotta have um, some different core values, but I, I think, you know, we're going to add some funny stuff into it. And we've always done funny stuff with OCR. The first year we played Saranac, we played the O'Reilly's theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me was like, I can't believe we actually did that, but hell yeah, we just that's did that. awesome. <laughs> and the whole entire crowd went and was like, oh, 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 O'Reilly. Oh, like that's everybody awesome. did I it wish I was us. there for that. <laughs> oh man, it was it was really, really funny. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So yeah, I, I would love to see OCR start getting into um the festival scene. But, you know, that's like we, we want to start kind of sticking our nose into that because we have like a jam side to us. But we also, you know, there's a lot of structure to the songs, um, and they're not always, you know, jammy. Sometimes they're rocky, or sometimes they're bluesy. So, you know, like there's a, there's a lot of different elements, and I think we would do well on the festival circuit. So I would love to get into the festival circuit. That's great, man. And I'm sure you guys keep working hard, and you'll get there. Yeah. You know. So Andy, uh, definitely, guys, he's a great guy, as you can tell. He's a genuine person. So check out his podcast, Hidden Jams. Uh, next uh, end scene, you'll see some of the uh, different links and the names you can search for it on social media. And just uh, keep sticking with it, man. I hope to see Hidden Jams and our common roots grow to what you want it to be. Come to your Dude, dream's fruition. Thank you so much. Man. Absolutely. So again, uh, any, any gigs you want to plug in the near future? This will probably be released about the second week of November. So. No, you know what? Um, if you're following our common roots, um, it's going to be late December, um, early New Year. Start looking for some new music, um, some some new tracks from us. Awesome. Um, you probably been if you've been coming out to our live shows, you've heard them. Um, we're we're in the process of writing. We got a bunch of different things that we're piecing together right now. Um, some really cool stuff. You know, we've just been really trying to look at music from a lot of different angles lately and our um even our whole band practice has been different and we've been taking different approaches to a lot of things and, and that's been really working so i want to see that continue um so yeah so i would say just uh keep checking out for new music and if um you're on the hidden jams shit um tip then it should be yeah like mid-december late december early new year is when uh, the second season will be done and once that comes out it's going to be every single week uh, i'm going to have an episode for you guys for at least 15 weeks and yeah that's awesome man yeah kudos congrats thank you for coming on i appreciate it Dude, thank you that was some Seriously. great convo and uh as always folks try not to get lost out there you will be seeing more of lost guidance real soon I actually got another guest coming on in a little bit so uh we'll see you guys have a good one